and see what happens. As we have got to the top right side of the map, our Red Zerg player. From Sidestone Gaming, this is true. Bomb left hand side, our pink Protoss is Zest. And as we go, let's see what's going to be happening. Thank you so much for all the love today, guys. All the resubs had loads of resubs, which is awesome to see. So thank you so much for resubscribing. Do you appreciate it? <clears throat> as we get this underway, he on bandwidth. And uh, seeing what's going to happen. And again, another best of five here today. Can't thank you all for tuning in. Now, talk a bit about these players. Obviously, True is a very aggressive player. Um, he likes to play a lot of very Ling heavy styles, a lot of counter attacks, a lot of run buys. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Zest is very regularly, yeah, just kind of a very micro impressive player. We saw against Impact the other day, he pulled off an absolutely miraculous turn around and uh, expecting more of that from him here today as we do get this setting on up so probe hanging around throwing down that nexus gonna see this gateway dropping down as well so gateway drops on in a few drones on the way up and well again that nexus just gonna be coming through towards completion in the next few moments 47 as my friend how you doing for 25 months Good to see you. How you doing? Before the Wardy spam, uh, Wardy emotes in the chat. Thank you so much. Hope, uh, hope things are going well for you. Appreciate it. Well, Drew already thrown down a third hatchery. I mean, in PvZ, even if you want to be aggressive, the majority of the time, the way that True plays aggressively, you will still go into a fairly fast third hatch for the lava that you would like to use. That's 47, that's going to drop a thousand love bits as well. That's our second love bits in the day. Coming in as a thousand. Thank you so much, 47, that's appreciate the love bits. Thank you so much. Again, hope you've been doing well. Appreciate the, uh, appreciate the support. Twilight Council dropping from Zest in the main base. Again, that Twilight Council up and running as we see this adept from Zest shading up to the top side of the map. And the Twilight Council going to be done soon. This Overlord coming down to the bottom as well, having a little bit of a look to see what's going on. Then speed getting started on the spawning pool. Third hatchery about to complete. And yeah, getting set up into all of this right now. And you just see the Robo Facility actually getting built up from Zestia on the main base. So Robo Facility building up as we see the Stalker from Zest going to pick its way through that Overlord. <clears throat> we do see the uh, Dark Shrine dropping down. Now, this is a very typical Zest opener. Stalker instead of the Stargate. And then also going in towards the Twilight the Robo and the Dark Shrine very quickly. A lot of the times, players will even go double Warp Prism with this to really try and, you know, really build up the pressure. And you uh, to really kind of just go and, you know, four Archons, two in each Warp Prism. Warp Prism on different bases can be very, very frustrating to deal with. Guns and Rod AD with the Twitch Prime for 10 months in a row. Says, thanks, Wardy, and I appreciate the support. Well, no, I appreciate the support. That's my line. You can't just steal my line. What am I meant to say if you steal my line? Am I meant to say your line? Ah, Johnson Rod, you know, honestly, you are the best viewer of Twitch chat I've ever seen. I tried to watch another Twitch viewer once, but uh, they just didn't chat as well as me. Thanks so much for the 10 minutes, dude. I appreciate it. Do you see the Rotron layer on the way up right now? Boom, boom, boom. So, nice and quick. I mean, it's the exact response you would want against a Robo Twilight Dark Shrine opening. The Roaches are nice and sturdy against the Archons. It, it puts you in a uh, pretty good uh, pretty good spot. You see the Stalker nibbling away at the Overlord. So, Overlord going to take a little bit of damage here. Do, 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 do. And this is why you build the Stalker, of course, so you can clean these Overlords out. Even though you don't have the Phoenix, which would really easily do the job as... Oh, no, true! I mean, I was just watching that overall going down, because I didn't expect the DTs to be this impactful, but gets a, f a Spore Crawler cancelled, and that's a dead third hatchery. Oh, man. Well, I mean, the DTs come in, and they get the job done already. That's a cancel on a couple of roaches, or one roach survives, but... Well, four DTs. 
I mean, the lair's about to be done, so you can have an overseer now, but obviously wasn't there in time to protect the third base, and that is so very painful. Very, very painful. <clears throat> Few links come over to attack. They don't even have link speed. True's just bypassed this completely to go into the road, uh, into the lair and the uh, road drawn. And now he's just losing links to the DT as well. Not a brilliant first game here from True so far. As can he do something off of two bases? Well, I would say pretty unlikely. As you can see the Archons now dropping down in towards the main. So we're going to try and get towards a couple of those drones. A couple of drones starting to go down here. Nice lift up on the Archon. And the Archon lifts up as well. Oh, very good control out of Zest. And I mean, we expect it from Zest as well. Again, if there's one thing Zest is excelling at, it's the way he can control his units in the micro. And again, the Warp Prison micro he showed the other day against Impact was just absolutely impeccable. It was, uh, it was just crazy. It was just crazy how good it was, so... Excited to see more of um, the best control here in this series, although probably doesn't need that much of it to win this first game. After killing that third hatch, it puts you into such a great spot. You can already see True drops down an infestation pit. I mean, that's just... I think that's a sign of, hey, I want to try and build some swarm hosts here just because I think this is my best way to get back in the game because I'm behind, right? So DT's putting Zest into a great spot. Now the Archon's dealing some good damage as well. Warp Prism is still around, heading towards the natural expansion as we speak. So maybe get another couple of drones, get them low. There we go, two drones dead. Just backs away, right away. Just nice and easily. One more drone going down in those queens. Trying to get picked off as well. Again, I mean, with the swarm host coming up, I feel like it's true. In an all or nothing play, as he loses the queen, loses this overseer. The damage that's being done is just really crazy now as it looks like Zest is ready to push forwards. If this first wave of Locust doesn't kill this army, Zest wins this game. It's as simple as that. So here we go, pushing across the map. The Depth, Stalker, Sentries, Immortals. The two Archons from the Prism drop down as well. Obviously two more Archons morphed in at home. It, it, it really is. These Swarm Hosts are die trying and I just don't think the Swarm Hosts have enough support to make this happen. Even if the Swarm Hosts take a good fight, I think there's just enough on the ground to kind of go, you know, go for beyond there. So the force fields drop down, trying to section units off. I mean, good micro on the Ar Archons means that Zest doesn't even lose anything there initially. One Zealot goes down so far, saves the Archons again, really good control. He's only lost one Zealot all game so far, now then Depth goes down too. Obviously a couple more Zealots should drop here because, well, Zealots are not meant to be given up. This is an insane resources loss tab as he kills the third hatchery the second time around. A few more Locusts drop in. Again, they do absolutely nothing because they're out of sync with the rest of them. Six Locusts just don't do enough together. And well, now the Swarm has coming off cooldown, but they're getting killed as well. And, and here come the Locusts one more time. This time, oh my god, the Archon's still being saved. Is Zest going to lose a single important unit here? I actually don't think he does. Let's just check that. It's 12 Zealots, an Adept, a Stalker, and a Sentry. 5.9 to 1.6k. I've seen this map a couple times today. The day was a little bit hectic with getting some players sorted out, so I feel like the maps might be a little bit out of sync with how many times they get played, but rest assured tomorrow we'll be obviously focused on the maps that didn't get played as much today, um, just to try and even things out. And of course tomorrow we've got two best of fives, two best of sevens, and a best of nine coming your way. It should be a really, really awesome day of StarCraft. True in the bottom right then, and we'll see what he gets up to here as the hatchery first will just come down. Zest begins the gateway at the front. And this is the map with the bridges. And yeah, the bridges are pretty funky, I would say. Like, it's definitely not something you see all of the time. And they're, they're, they're definitely kind of interesting in terms of how they can uh, play out, I think. And I think there's some potential there with the bridges, but I don't think it's something that's going to be hugely popular because in some matchups, I just feel it's going to be one of those things where it's just going to be broken. Like, it's just going to be so much more powerful for one race than the other. Especially when all of the pathways are bridges, more or less, apart from these ones with the rocks on them. Like, that's the thing. Like, I feel like if the middle path was bridges, okay. But if, the, you know, because these patches, paths are bridges as well, and we already saw it's very difficult to attack into this space when this space does get up and running. And it's very difficult to attack into this base too, because or defend this base, because you can't get there easily from your other bases. So it's uh, pretty tough. Pretty tough so far. 
As you see, there's a lot of true just going to be pressing forwards. Going to be heading in towards the natural expansion in a moment or so. Cybernetic score. On the way up in the third hatchery. Same as the last game. Nice and early around that two minute marker. Just gets that started up real quick right here. So, getting that going for the moment. Chrono Boost on the Adept, so that's going to be popping out shortly. If the Stargate on the way down from Zest as well. Let's get that rolling as the probe here from Zest. Just going to do a bit of back and forth. Just a few moments of build-up right now. Now, Zest has chosen for the Stargate here for game number two, so changing up his choice of tech already. Playing this out just a little bit differently. as the Stargate about to complete. And as the Stargate completes, again, the couple of options kind of rise up as to how you go about this. It's going to be the Oracle to begin with, and obviously you can go Double Oracle, you can go Oracle Phoenix Oracle. You can go Single Oracle into Second Stargate for Double Phoenix. A lot of options. Fast lair by True. Similar to what we've been seeing before with the Rotorin to help him defend, but maybe even a little bit faster than that. So, intrigued to see what he does. He cancels Link Speed for this, right? Or skips Link Speed altogether for this. So, no Link Speed in play. As we are going to be seeing. A couple of lords heading around the map. What's up, uh, Saya Rura? And Unisit, Unisite Fury. Coming in, saying hello in the chat. Good to see some new people around. Hello, welcome. As you see Zest just hanging out to the right-hand side with an oracle. Just looking to see what's going to be going on. Rotron popping up in the main base as well. And the oracle shows up in the natural. Already getting a few drone kills. Three, four. Things at five in a second. What do you think, guys? Nidus Network? I think Nidus Network with the lead being this fast. And there it is. Nidus Network dropping down. So... True going to get really, really aggressive. Now, you guys didn't see the tiebreakers, but Blight did beat Zest on this map with a Nidus Network play. As we have got the couple of Oracles heading over to the right-hand side, ready to go in towards the natural. But we'll see him moving in at the front so he can come forward and throw down that Nidus. I mean, this could be really dangerous if these Oracles don't see it, but now they do. Nidus Network spotted. There's a few drones go down. Oracle's now into the main base, and oh my god, there's still no Sporkle. As the true is going to take so much damage. These Oracles are having a wild time. Insane amounts of damage done here. As the Oracle's finally running out of energy. 11 kills on one. The other, oh, had 10 drone kills on it. 21 drones so far, down and dead. But does Zest has, uh, have anything to defend this Nidus? I mean, he knows it's a Nidus, right? Like, he's got that at least. There's just going to be so many queens and roaches popping out in the main. It feels like Zest just has, well, he's kind of out a ro uh, an immortal from the Robo. He's got Temple Archives coming in too, but he's about to lose power to all four of his gateways and the Stargate. Probes pull in. There's just no way these Roaches and Queens die. Absolutely no way. Zest does not have anything, and True will take game two of this best of five. Ah, uh, well, locked into the action here. As they are looking to advance through to the same uh, quarterfinals where they will play, the winner of this will play Solar tomorrow? Question mark, I forgot which part of the bracket this is on. Yes, the winner of this plays Solar. And that's tomorrow, starting at midday CET once again. Alright, so setting up into this, and just going to be seeing an extractor come down on the main base. So Hatch, Gas, and Pool getting started. The next is dropping in from Zest here as well. Just getting that underway also. There's this probe just coming around and uh, heading up to the top side of the map. Is this the last match today? No. After this, we're going to have Impact versus Keen. Another fresh best of five for you guys. So we've got um, this series to finish, and then another best of five as well. Keen versus Impact after this. Then tomorrow we have two best of fives, two best of sevens, and a best of nine. Loads of action coming up from the Team Liquid Map Contest Tournament as we wrap up this week. And of course, on Monday we start a whole new fresh week, although I'm not sure what we're actually going to be doing that week. Um, 
probably do a sub night one night. I think we're going to be doing Cranks Fun No Keyboard Tournament or No Mouse Tournament. It was one of the two on Monday. It is tough though. Like it's it's a kind of a weird week because it's the lead up to Katowice. Players don't really want to play in much because they're practicing and keeping their builds together for Katowice. And then that, that obviously creates a lot of awkwardness. So I'm not sure what's going to happen next week. We'll have to figure out as we go. Then the week after is Katowice. So unfortunately, it's going to be a bit of a rough couple of weeks on the stream for me. But uh, hopefully you guys will be able to come and uh, check us out anyways. And uh, we'll still be able to have some action, I hope. There's some cars are currently zooming around on the top left-hand side there. As the Adept comes in, Hatchery takes some damage, and now the Adept backing away as the Adept shading through. And just going to be moving around the natural, looping around a little bit, and then going out down through the center. So actually pulling back down to the bottom right side as Ling Speed going to be finishing up in a few moments' time. True just going to get that completed here. And, yeah, I mean, Oracle production has started up, so Zest... Coming around to the upper left-hand side of the map with these oracles. It's flying straight in over here. And it's going to come in straight through and pick up a couple of drone kills already. So three workers going down. So that's picking up a couple kills so far. Second oracle about to pop out. Again, this proxy star board, Stargate is designed to kind of come in before the spores are done, right? So you can see the true spore finishing now. Imagine this oracle had to come all the way from the bottom right side of the map. Obviously, it wouldn't have been there before the spore crawler, right? So, it kind of just gives us a little bit of extra time to deal damage. It does mean you'll lose the pylon and the stargate, though. And you'll see True knows by the timing of the oracles just that the fact that this is a proxy stargate. So, True picking up on that information pretty quickly and dealing with this. And as you are going to see those two oracles getting pushed away by the couple of queens. So, the queens are able to push those oracles back out into the center of the map. So away they go. Rubber facility, Twilight Council finishing up as we see the Stalker nibbling away at this Overlord. So True going to be uh, taking a few shots right here. And that Overlord is going to go down. Again, Rubber facility just being chrono boosted as the War Prism coming in. Lingus will finally get that Stargate kill up on the upper right side. So. And Stargate dropping down there, and again, the couple of Oracles running around the left, so they're still alive. As True makes a few more links, I mean, typical True. And as the Temple Archives will allow Zest to go into the uh, couple of Archons if he'd like to. I wonder if he just goes straight into Storm, because he doesn't have a Warp Prism yet. Unless he just wants to get Archons right away, and I mean, there is a lot of links coming onto the map, so... Oh, sorry, there is a Warp Prism! What, he's blind! Tell you what, the light pink on this uh, whitish background on the minimap... I'm not seeing it very easily, I'm not going to lie. One of the oracles got taken down as well. Apologies for missing that, but there is a big wing counter attack coming in towards the third base. Stalker and a couple of adepts already going to be surrounded here as the Archons heading forwards on the War Prism. Probe goes down as well. The shield battery in the back also killed without a cancel. Oracle is alive, comes back home to defend. As the two Archons are actually going to find themselves a couple of overlords to begin with, so definitely a good start over here. And that's potentially a queen kill as well against that overlord. That's the supply block for True. The queen gets transfused. And there's going to have to be more transfusers on it to keep that alive, though. And there is. So for the moment, True keeps the queen. But again, the supply block's a big one. And you can see True makes eight overlords in response to that. Like, just okay, let's get out of supply block and not get supply block for the next five minutes. Not quite five minutes, but the next two or three. We'll not have to worry about making any more overlords. Definitely huge amount of overbuild there. Not efficient, but might just get away with it as we see the overlord here getting picked up as well. Arkham's turning around to pick away at a couple of those hydras. Again, Zess just lifting up, getting out of there. As Link is coming down to the bottom right side, going to run in towards the mineral line, but Zealot's in position. Probes are there too. Another couple of units on the way up from Zest. We'll continuing on with that as the Immortal and the Adept in the Warlock. Going to keep those Lings at bay. Lifts up the Archons one more time. Still just harassing around with these, but as he goes into Storm and all the rest of it, it doesn't look like Truce is going to roll over and die like he did over in game number one. And obviously True not being too aggressive himself beyond these Zerglings, so that's not just going to roll over and die either, like we saw in game number two. So we're setting up into a bit of a longer game here on Acropolis. Again, this map, I really feel the more I see this map, the more I like it. The more I feel like, oh, cool, like, it's a map that really feels like it works. It's very fun. It's 
seems successful. It gives us really consistently long and good games. I'm a fan of that. We get behind some longer games, especially because we've seen a lot of days of cheesy in the map contest tournament, not gonna lie. So we've seen the prism lifting up, heading back down to the bottom right. Zergling's hanging out in the center of the map here from True now, so some links hanging out fit. Two more links on the way up. Bailing speed gets started, Hydra speed starts up two, plus the plus one melee. So all of these upgrades coming into play. So let's able to pick off this Zergling here. So Zergling taking some damage. <coughs> As you see the results come all the way down to the bottom left hand side. They're going to start charging forwards, although the Hydralisk is able to push those away again as well. Zergling's here from True just sat out the front. And we are going to see those Lings pushed away through the center of the map. So Lings push back up to the top side. Just going to be seeing those Archons and Immortals. High right, Templar as well gathering up. So Zest Army looking pretty good here as he sees a bunch of these Zealots on the uh, Banes on the bottom left. The Zealots waiting to try and push in towards this base, right? They're wanting to hit the full face while Zest comes along the top side of the map as well. Meanwhile, we also have a Link counter attack ready to go. So True is setting up to run into this base. It feels like that base is pretty well defended with a Shield Battery and an Oracle nearby though. A couple more Archons about to finish up and Zest. Pressing straight forwards in towards this ramp. Bane's running through and, well, a couple of force fields coming down. The Zealot's getting blown up all over the place. On the bottom side, we see those Lings getting a uh, good surround too, so that's a cleanup. Neither player really making much progress here, although true. Up at 180 supply against 133 is doing pretty well for himself at the moment. Those Lings able to pick that Zealot off to the far right side. The Lings hanging out also. Plus two melee. Just about, well, a third of the way done at the moment. And Zergling's pulling back over towards the right side. The extra Zealot's getting warped in. Links from True back up the right, having to run away here. Still not able to find a run by. However, fourth base on the way up, and this means Zest will leave behind all the stack defense. Not a lot of cannon in the battery, but shit, you know. A uh, stasis ward as well. Ooh. These are immortals, not sure why they're out in the middle here. We'll lose both of them. And the Zealots warping in should not be in time to save it. Oh my god, they actually are. And the Zealots are insane. Those immortals are actually very tanky. Didn't think they were going to survive that long. I guess getting it up against the corner really minimized the damage it took. Bane's going to roll through here and through again. Desperate to try and make something happen. Bane's actually going to connect on those Zealots up at the top. And I mean, that's a lot of kills no matter how you look at it. Whether you think about the fact that it's only Zealots or whatever. True cleans up quite nicely and with True, the one thing I would say is that I'd just love to see him be on a few more drones. You know, like with the style he's playing, this Ling Bane Hydra, he wants to trade off a lot, he wants to give away units to try and pick off economy. I just feel he could do this off of 80 workers a lot better. And it's a lot of the time is what you see, Ling Bane Hydra works off of 80 drones and you trade and you trade and you trade and you trade and you, trade. you don't necessarily trade well. But because you've got such a strong economy and you're applying pressure, you know, in front of that economy, you're like, oh, well, boom, you know, I can just keep doing this. But True only has 66 workers, which means that these trades that are inefficient are not going to allow him to really do that well, as we see the Lings and the Banes continue to morph in here from True. I see a few more Zealots just running forwards there. Banes can see good connections. I'm just going to see the Lings getting a full surround, cleaning that up. Lings and Bams want to run up this ramp here, but it's going to be a little bit tough. Bams has some fruit, just going to be picking away a couple of those pylons. I mean, trying to open up this attack path again. The rest of True's army. Now, here's the thing. Because he is only on 66 drones, he does have a larger army supply than what you might usually see with Ling Bane Hydra. So it looks extremely difficult to hold, but again... There isn't much of a rebuild behind this from True like there might usually be. Good first two storms there as well as now Ling Bane comes up to the top side. I would like to see this coming a little bit early while Zest was distracted and not able to fully say, okay, I'm going to drop this right here. Ooh, those Banes are connecting on the Zealots even though the storms have pretty much killed them. It's a shame. It's going to be seeing Banes and Hydras continuing to gather up in the center here from True now, so... Still getting a lot going for himself, and we see Zest 
rebuilding this wall off that we've seen before. And it's still exposed, it's still a pile on the top side of the wall, so it's gonna be broken through here pretty quickly. Again, the only thing I feel for true is that you just keep sending like one or two, you know, not one or two, but like a clump of units at a time. Imagine this attack comes in and there's also attack up here. Zest has to pay so much attention to where those different sets of units are, and for Zest, you know, he has to really control these, drop storms and all of that. True, kind of, once he moves forwards, you know, if his Banes generally connect on something, it's kind of okay for him with the style he's playing. Goes back in towards the third base here. And again, I mean, he forces some probes to run away, and again, just imagine Zest was running his probes around trying to get out of here, while you also had a few units up here. Like, again, like, I really just feel that's the one thing True's missing. Just the lack of multitasking really only ever for one set of units at Zest at a time. It's not like there's a larger fight taking place, it's not like Zest is out on the map paying attention elsewhere either. So Zest really has nothing to pay attention to other than whatever is happening that True, you know, throws at him. So it gives Zest a real a real pass, I think, on having to deal with this like you usually might. Like I just feel like usually it's a bit more difficult. My Oracle wants a revelation, but it actually just takes a couple of hits to the face. Maybe now, because True pushing forward with a bit more of the army. He's sending a good chunk of army to the top right. And get rid of those rocks really opens up this pathway up to the high ground. As well, Zest, the Immortals up to the top. Going to take a little bit of damage already. Banes continue to come through. A couple probes going down. Phoenix showing up from the double star that we saw. Phoenix King was built as well. He is preparing for True to go for something of a Muta Switch. It's actually picked off all of the Hydras here. So all the Hydras down. The attack up to the top goes off an Archon. So that army's cleaned up, but not much more. Phoenix now lifting up Banelings, and the Banelings are going to clean up so much of this. And True is going to still run through for Zerglings, and that's the big issue. These Phoenix will not do anything against Zerglings. Oracle comes back home, trying to clean up these things as well. That Archon goes down, another Archon drops before it's finished building. I think True will just get a bit too much eco damage done right now. This top side base is cleaned out. The Lings will continue to lay through this wall off as well. Cybercore down, and we go up into the main base, which also has no wall off available. And these probes are useless in here because they're oversaturated, but better to be oversaturated than dying, I guess is the idea. Although now the probes fall down to the low ground and Phoenix continue to build up here to do that do this isn't a thing. Wow, um, I'm not going to lie, as GG's called, True takes game three and goes up in the series. What were the Phoenix about? I think he was expecting... There we go, figured it out. Bottom right hand side, the red Zerg player from Storm Gaming. Give it up if you're cheering on true up against the pink protoss in the top left side we have got zest overlord pressing forwards to begin the game again we got a couple of inhibitor zones on this map one here one here but that is about it that's all we've got to play with here on this map these couple of inhibitor zones, so there's a probe starts to come through the center. Let's see what happens. Wonder if it might be worth building Colossus versus True. I mean you kind of feel like it might be, right? That's the time when he actually spams out Spire to swap into Muters and he just builds corruptors. I don't know, it's 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 tough to say because it kinda would be cool, but then Yeah. It it depends like cause as much as True likes to just spam Ling Bane Hydra. He will not, he, he will, you know, if he sees Colossus, he will build a spy. He will get Corruptors up. Can he destroy the inhibitors? No, you cannot. Um, it is one of the things which I really think are kind of... I, I feel like if you had, like, a load of hit points and you could kill it at the, like, later stages of the game, that'd be really cool. But it kind of depends. Like, right now, it feels like the maps are very much so designed for them to be there all game long. They're, um... They're pretty interesting. I mean, I really feel like on this map, they're kind of wasted, though, because I kind of look at them like, well, who wants to attack up this narrow pathway anyways, right? Yeah, like, it really, all it does is slow the very first, like, five-minute attacks, like a roach rush, right, coming straight through the center. That's all it does. Because after that, who on earth is going to attack with their entire army down this ramp into a walled-off central area, by the way? If you get down here, you can't get out without going back up one of these ramps unless you break down rocks. So, I don't think anyone is in a rush to use this attack path beyond the first five minutes or so. And, and I think that's one of the flaws of the map. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, it's why I, I don't think this map is necessarily weak as a map, actually. I think it works pretty well as just a pretty standard map. It's just I don't think these zones really add much to it. That's all. Which actually surprises me that it makes it through the judging phase because I feel like, well, it's a good map. This map kind of got through on it being a good map more, for, more so than the usage of the inhibitor zones. So considering it's submitted as an inhibitor zone map, you would have expected maybe something else to come through that maybe showed them being used in a more creative way or so. Anyways, um, I, I, I still like the map. I, I think it actually gives this map's given us some pretty good games so far. I just I, I'm not sold on the fact that these do anything basically. Eight drones on the way up. The shade doesn't get slowed. The shade should get slowed. It should delay or slow everything on the ground and in the skies by 35%. I'll keep an eye on it when the adept shade through again. As you can see here, the probe getting slowed down. And then we'll continue on. It slows down air units as well if they fly over it. So, for example, this Oracle currently about to give us a demonstration. Nope, gonna dodge around. Definitely the correct decision. I'm, now I'm interested to watch to see if the Adept Shade works, but then we're probably not going to see Adept Shade anymore because it's that stage of the game where you just send your Adepts to the third base to protect it. Robo and Twilight coming in after this Phoenix Oracle opener, so. Sess getting ready for the Archon drop follow up. Drone gets picked off and oh, not crazy amounts of damage, right? The Phoenix and the Oracle split up to get away here and they're going to meet up again later, I'm sure, to form once again the Dream Team. Phoenix will just find an Overlord that's heading down this side of the map. I mean, this shouldn't have, <laughs> this shouldn't have died. There's a transfuse right there. <laughs> I'm just watching. Like, is it gonna die? Is it really? And it does. That shouldn't have died. There's uh, there was a transfuse right there. And as we're gonna be seeing the warp prism about to pop out. I'm just gonna be seeing that temple archive is dropping in on the main base. Temple archive is dropping on the main charge on its way up. Chron uh, currently just on its way out. Hydrogen about to finish. Oracle ends up turning away from this base over here. Shiite Templar just warping in. Zest, uh, no third base just yet, but you imagine that's going to be one of the next things he sets up. It is six gates, so with the Archons, we'll probably see a few charge lock warpins. And uh, that'll really power this up and make it a little bit scarier to deal with. So, really looking to commit quite heavily to some aggression, looking to get some damage done. There we go, the Archons coming in, and it is fast Hydra's actually out of true. So far, the first one again transfused up to health. Save, maybe he was just saving that transfuse on the Overlord to drop on the Hydra right there. Maybe that's what it was. As we are going to be seeing the uh, Prism still just looping around, seeing where it can go. Prism sits out on the bottom side. Zealots and a couple of Adepts currently moving through the center. So we're taking this Watchtower and continue to shade down to the bottom right-hand side. So... Shading down to the bottom right, we're gonna see a few hydras coming in. Trick gets picked off. And Gwal's well, all charging into the main base, gonna get rid of the queen. And he's gonna be able to get rid of a couple of these uh, drones. Some drones taking some damage, and again the hydras, well the hydras then, then picked away it as well, so. This is actually kind of bad, so I'll lose the production. The hydras trying to get up to the high ground here, force field in by the warping of units. But now some Zelt's coming in on the other side as well, and Zest is starting to get quite a lot done with this. This is one Archon, however, and Sentry's on the high ground, seeing dealt damage by the new Hydras. And these Adepts are going to run away. I'm not going to see if the Shades get uh, slowed just yet. Yeah, I think Zest has other things on his mind than popping the Adept Shades when they're already pretty safe. Another couple of Sentries walked in, though, and Zest has complete control of this main. With the Hydra Den down, you can only actually build Zerglings to be able to deal with this. And so if you can only build Zerglings right here, well, you're going to kill the Zerglings as they pop out. And so now the Sentry's never going to die, so the entire main base falls. So Zest is going to break through the main base. What a play this has been. Taking a third Nexus behind this now is really be seen. And now the Spawning Pool will be targeted as well, right? Oh my god. The Lair died and he didn't even build a Hydra then. Now he's going to lose the Spawning Pool? I mean, Tree is making some mistakes there, although Zest just made a mistake. 
let these Zerg wings up. Needs to micro these sentries as the Archon and the Zelds come in to save the day. Another force field. Those legs are kind of stuck here. A couple of Zelds saw, well, actually all clumped up trying to get that spawning pool. Not quite how it's meant to go. Just go around the other side, guys. Recall comes in, gets most of the units out of there. There's a few Zellers. We'll actually turn to fight the Lings. And then Zess, oh, realizing his mistake now, we'll try to get the pool, but you know, definitely a bit of a shame that he didn't get that before, so. A little bit of a shame there, but that's about it. As the Forge drops down from Zess. In the main base, but he's already got a, such a strong follow up. Obviously, True's not been mining from the main base for a long time now. He's lost that, he doesn't have the production from there. And so Zess pushing through the center of the map. Sentries, Zealots, Immortal, more Archons. I mean, he looks pretty great. This Warp is actually already drops down over here. The Queen pops out and gets surrounded. Killed instantly. Oh, fourth base isn't exactly having a great time either as the Prism will lift up and head across towards the main. More units here from Zest. Coming down the left side, ready to push into this left-hand side base of truth. Here he goes, Zelts charging forwards. Archon here to get rid of a few Zerglings as well. So it's still set up in the main base. Revelation drops down, and we are seeing those things caught up in that right now. You see the uh, stasis ward set up as well here. As the Zelts from Zest going to go charging forwards. Uh, we don't quite get enough done just yet. That Queen Ayla pulled down to the low ground. A uh, nice force field over here. Great kills from the Archons. Drones drop quickly. As the Zerglings continue back up to the top. Extra Zealots warping in from Zest now. Going to charge over to this bottom right hatchery. So that main base trying to rebuild is going to get killed again. He's still pressuring into the third base too. It looks as though this is probably going to be over. Wings on the left hand side though. Counter attack will get a little bit done. All in some trouble. The probe's running around. I mean, as the Zealots warp in here, pretty much the solution to the problem is found. The Zelds will deal with this very easily. This only pulls back towards a few hydras that have just popped off on the lava here, but... I mean, again, the Zelds in the main have cancelled that hatchery, and now they're just sitting up there. And it's just a matter of waiting for True to realize that he's very, very dead, right? He's on two bases, maybe as this base goes down, because it will die. His units are up out of position towards the natural. So True has absolutely, really nothing left at all. And Zess is going to tie us up, take us to a game five for the first time today. That's very exciting here as we do see those Archons coming in, picking off these Overlords. And True's going to try and hang on. His Hydra is sitting out the front, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not a believer. As the Zelts come down from the high ground, the drones are going to pull in, but their force field is out. Hydras are popping, but going down instantly. This is GG. True taps out, and Zest will take the game at number four. And we start off to the bottom right-hand side of the map. Our Red Zerg player from Psystorm Gaming, this is true. Up against the pink Protoss on the top left-hand side, we have got Zest. Game 5 of this series. Winner advances to play against Solar tomorrow in the round of 8. Remember, if you win this, you guarantee yourself $175 for being in the round of eight. You win that, you guarantee yourself $300, then there's $600 and $1,200 up for grabs. Next is dropped down here from Zest in the natural expansion. So getting that started up, there's a couple of drones on the way out. Spawning pool going to be finishing behind that mineral line. In just a little while here from True here, uh, from True. What does he go into for this game five? A couple of games he's won very different styles. The Nidus Network in that second game, followed up by the, just the Ling Bane Hydra and masses and masses of it in the game after. A few different options right now. And we're going to be seeing this hatchery dropping in on the third base. So free hatch to begin with, and this is pretty much how True has opened every game so far in this series. <coughs> Overlord still heading in towards the upper left side to see what's going on. So we're going to be seeing that in a moment or two as the Adept is being corner boosted out. And again, the probe of Zest just checking out the natural expansion, seeing what's up and happening. And the Twilight Council is on its way here now too. The Twilight Council coming in, just going to be seeing the Adept coming across the map. 
I mean, this is a real fast Twilight to the point where it might not even be a Robo with it. It might just be a Resonating Glaives. And with the way that True's been playing, he's been very greedy going straight to Hydra's a lot of the time. This could be a really good way to punish him if that's what Zest thinks he's been doing. But it is a Robo facility, so then much more likely to be a Dark Shrine and in towards those Archon drops, which has still worked well for Zest. And it is something that Zest loves doing, so it's still not too surprising, right? I mean... I think if you say Archon Drop, you almost immediately think of Zest, even though it's become such a stand in PvZ. He's the player that will do it when it's out of meta. He's the player that will not switch it up game after game. He just loves them so much. And there it is, the Dark Shrine coming down. And so Zest setting up in towards the DT-based Archon Drops. Now, last time, True's Lair was a little bit late, and so he wasn't on time to actually get the uh, Overseer out, and the Sporkle was late, and he lost his third base. And that right there more or less lost him the game. So this time around, the lair is a bit faster. So it should be up in plenty of time to have an Overseer out. But it still feels like True is also heading straight in towards the Ling Hydra style, right? No Bane Nest or anything. Oh, a Rotron, okay. Because he is he just scouting now and seeing what's up? I think he sees that maybe this gateway. Maybe it's just proportion, precautionary. Because that lair is way faster than the Rotron, right? So when the lair finishes, Maybe it's just for the overseeing plenty of time. Hmm. Okay, well, the Roach is going to be good. We saw that before. And it's very good, especially if Zest then wants to be super aggressive. And see, True just needs to make sure not to lose this third hatch. Oh, the Nidus. Oh, that actually didn't cross my mind. Hmm. It makes sense, though, as well, because that's what he didn't gain. This is exactly what he did in game number two. Um, it just didn't cross my mind at all because I thought of all the other possibilities there were. So that's obviously one of the more popular styles as of late. As you can see, this first Overlord here will get taken down. But the Overseer, oh, Overlord here, probably morph into an Overseer to move in. The Overseer's morphing on the other side of the map. As you see the Queen here on the third base going down to these couple DTs. Immortal already starting to be built here as well by Zest, so setting up into something that can maybe help out. His Overseer is in detection mode. Looks like True has no intention of keeping his third base alive. He just wants to get into that Nidus and get across the map. Overlord pressing forwards here. Zest has some vision on the, the corners of his bases, though. So now he knows exactly what's going on. So he's he's pulled off the lava. He's going to morph in Archons. And then I guess recoil home. Because there's no reason to keep him on the map. Unless he's really confident he can defend. Which he can. Because he kills the Nidus Network. So kill the Nidus Network this quickly. And those pylons on the edge of the bases paying dividends for Zest. Telling him exactly where this attack is trying to come in from. And look at Zest in the face of danger. He's killed the third base. He knows it's a Nidus. He drops down the third Nexus. He's feeling confident. He's feeling good. He's looking amazing here in this game number five. And it feels as though True is just going to be starting to run out of options very quickly now, actually. I mean, what do you do from here? It's, um... It's very tough to say, really, as we see this, uh... We'll put some dropping down in towards the main couple of drones going down. Chasing away in a third drone picked up as well. Archon's lifting up into the warp prism, and prism escapes up the right-hand side. A few gates continue to build, and it feels as though Zest is just setting up for that big follow-up attack. That could be game-ending here. I mean, it's true already, though. I mean, maybe he's just def looking to defend the all-in, because true is basically all-in. Making a ton more links as the hatchery comes back up, but no drones. Overseer goes down. He's 15 workers behind. What do you do right now is true. He gets all those zerglings out, so they're going to start coming... Well, across the map when Link Speed finishes. In terms of the Rotron, though, I mean, there's 10 Roaches up. They're just sat in the main base looking to defend. Not pretty at all, though, right now from True. He's been completely shut down, denied. And, uh, he's struggling to get back into it. Oh! Well, that's going to be a kill on the Archons, at least. One Archon drops out. We'll try to run away. Mm, probably will make it out there. Losing the prison. Bit of a shame, especially if Zest is about to attack right now, because that really slows down when his attack can come through, right? Unless you don't really want to attack, you don't have the prism for micro and for reinforcements. And it's just crazy. Zest up by almost 20 workers, and he's still the one who's like, ah, you know what? I'll you know, I'll fight into you then. Let's go. Pulls back a little bit now as his lings go running by towards that third base. He's also warped in there. I love it. Warped in right next to the immortal, just to make sure that immortal's got a little bit less surface area on it. Anything you can do to protect those important units at moments like that is so nice. And actually, it's obviously keeps it. Uh, the mole didn't get dove on, but it might have got dove on if the zealots weren't there, right? Or if the zealots weren't right next to it, especially. Because then you're like, oh, you know what? Let's, let's quickly kill this. And it's always a good pick off the mole, right? 
Nice Network is finishing. As the Nidus finishes up, we're going to be seeing a lot more units start to pour out of it. True's army ready to attack up to the top left hand side. So here he goes, Zerglings, Queens, and Ravagers. Ready to press on forwards here. And no damage being dealt. Let's see if the transfusion is coming down. This is the Ravager. Again, pulls back up the health force a moment too, but I'll give a good force field as well. Gonna choke up all of those Zerglings, and it is a massacre over here. These Archons are picking a crazy number of kills because this one has 26 players over here originally. Picking off all of those Zerglings as it ran in. That's GG, and Zest will take this down 3 to 2.